Hi everybody, this is Steve. This is another video in the series on how to make generative art. In this video, we're gonna be talking about variables, which are key to doing anything in programming. And we'll also spend a little time talking about some math shortcuts in programming. You might have heard the word variables in math class where you're solving for X, and it's kind of the same in programming. The variable stands for something else, usually a number. So to demonstrate this, Let's uh, copy, we'll open up the getting colors from a table, the one I used last time, and I'll do file duplicate. That way we're gonna be using colors from a color palette. And so this is what we had before. Now, instead of 200, 200, uh, 200, let's put in X equals uh, 200 and then y equals 250 and then we'll do radius rad equals uh, 150 say and now we can replace these with the x and the y and the radius and we'll hit play and we've got our circle these right here hsb are also variables coming from here we can put in a random width here and a random height and we'll hit play and now we get our circle in various places uh, one thing I haven't mentioned yet you can tidy the code you see how I've got this kind of jammed up and watch this these are all kind of bunched together so if I go to edit tidy code it tidies the code which is nice I need to explain to you about local variables versus global variables. Now you might remember me saying that setup happens before the draw function. Well, there's some things to add to that. Uh, this preload loading a table happens before the setup and you can have something that happens even before the preload. If I wanted this rad equals 150 to be up here, I could and that would be called a global variable if I put it up here. Now you'll see a lot of programming where they put let in front of this. And it used to be necessary, but uh, lately with P5.js, I haven't found a need to put let in front of it, uh, but you can, of course. But anyway, if I put this up here, I can get rid of it here and it still works. So if you have variables within the functions, those are called local variables. And if you have a variable outside of the function at the top, that's called a global variable. One other thing to note, doesn't exactly have to do with variables, but if I wanted to do some sort of function, uh, let's say I said radius equals random 150 here, you'll see that it doesn't work. So functions don't work outside of one of these functions, the preload or the setup or the draw. You have to be calling a function within a function in order for this to work. When it comes to naming your variables, there's a tradition of using lowercase to start the name of the variable. And then if you have something else, uh, say I put palette color, I would put a capital C to differentiate uh, when a new word is starting. You can do something like palette color or a uh, capital P here, and it still works, but tradition says put this here and this here. The other thing to note about variables is you want them to be clear. So if I just put P here, I could make a variable that just said P, but then it would be unclear to somebody reading this code what I'm doing with P. What is P? I don't know what P is. So it's nice to actually spell out the word palette. I think most users would understand that HSB is hue, saturation, brightness. They would understand what X and Y are, but when it comes to a P, uh, they wouldn't know what that is. So spell it out. One thing that's nice about variables is to print to console, uh, let's say print the x comma y comma rad, and we'll see the x position here, the y position, and the radius here. 
Of course, we could floor the X and floor the Y in our console so that it isn't so many digits. We'll hit that again, and now we get something a little more concise. The reason you might want to put some variables to your console is for when you're testing your outputs. So you get one output that works, and you can see the variables that went with that output, and you can see another output that's not so good, and you see the variables that went with that output, and that gives you information that you can use to change your code. We had talked about random seed before. That's something you can print to console. So in setup, before all this, let me go ahead and create a random seed. And instead of putting random seed, though, we need a variable in here. So let's put seed equals random uh, 9999, something like that. And then in random seed, we'll put the word seed, and we're going to print the console seed. So we know what it is. Oh, another thing that you could print to console is the palette. I like to do that sometimes when I'm trying to, uh, I've got like 30 palettes and I'm trying to decide if this palette is good or this palette is not so good. Um, it's nice to see what palettes uh, the output is using. But let's do this and let me, let me get rid of this down here and we'll hit play. So this was the seed that was used. Actually, let me floor this. So it's a little easier to see. Okay, here's our seed. If I want to get this exact same output, I can pause it, copy this seed, paste it up here, and then I could put a dash dash to comment this out, and then hit play, and I get the same result. So again, if you're testing your code, you get an output you didn't like, you could copy the seed, uh, hard key it in here, then run it and tweak your code to see if you can change the output using that seed. Except remember that this output is dependent on the number of times that random has run before this circle gets drawn. I want to show you some math stuff involving variables, but to do that, uh, let's add a draw function. We're going to do a little bit of animation here. Uh, I'm going to, oh, I need function draw, of course. And I need the parentheses after the draw. And I'm going to take my circle and put it in here. Um, actually, take it out of here. Uh, so it should draw this just the same. Very good. Uh, but let's put in here that we're going to do, actually, let's start the X at position 0. And I'm going to do, so now it's going to appear over here. If I do x equals x plus 1, we're going to see that circle go across the screen. Now, it's leaving a streak because I need to put a background. So let's do, actually, get rid of this, and we'll put background uh, 150. So it's constantly drawing the background. And then we'll see that go across without a streak. Very good. Uh, but programmers like to take shortcuts. So a short way of saying x equals x plus 1 is to say x plus plus, which is kind of weird, I know, but it works. Let's hit play, and we get the same thing. Uh, we can also do minus, minus. Instead of, uh, let's say we put the X over on the right. So 500, it starts. And we can do, of course, we can do X equals X minus 1. And we get this. But we can also do X minus, minus. And that does the same thing. Another thing we can do is we can say x equals x minus 2, and that results in the circle going a little bit faster. But another way of saying x equals x minus 2 is x minus 
equal to. It's weird, but uh, programmers like to take shortcuts. So if we hit play, we get the same thing. We could start this at zero and say x plus equal to, and we get this. We can also do some multiplication with this. For that, let's add a, an increment variable, and we'll say uh, 1.001. Try that, and we're going to do x equals x times increment. And we'll hit play. It should be going faster across the screen. I just realized it wasn't working because I've got x equals 0 up here. I need that to at least be 1. So let's try that again. And still not moving. Let's try making the increment smaller. There it goes. It's starting to move. And it gets faster and faster. Very good. Let's do 1.1. And we'll do this x times equals increment. And watch that go. There we go. Same thing. Besides the variables we've been talking about, there are also system variables. And you've already seen one of those. It's height and width. Those are system variables. Another system variable is window width and window height. We could uh, put that in here. And what that is, is the available space for the canvas. So if I hit play now, it takes up all of the available space. I could do window width times 0.95, and it would take up almost all of the available space. Another thing, a uh, good trick, if you want a square canvas and you want it to fit in the available space, we can do something like can size equals the minimum, this is another function, of the window width and the window height. Then we can put in here canv size, comma, canv size. And now we get a square canvas that fits in the window. Let me take out this x increment and let's. Um, hard key i think the x and the y for now we'll do let's do 200 and 200 and the radius of 200 and we'll hit play okay so we got our circle there i want to talk about reproducibility and what that means is if the canvas becomes larger or smaller what happens to your art uh, we want this circle right now. It looks like it's about uh, in the third of the way into the canvas. We want it to stay a third of the way in the canvas, whether the canvas gets smaller or larger. But right now, if I make the canvas size, let's comment that out and say create canvas. And I'll say 200 comma 200. We get this. So the thing to do Instead of these hard keyed numbers, we want this to be a proportion of the width of the canvas or the height of the canvas. So in this case, we got the X, so we want it width times, and let's say 0 0.33. So we're putting it at a thirds position. And we'll do the height, the Y, at height times 0 0.33. And then the radius, we can do uh, a percentage of the width or the height, whichever one we want to pick. And we'll say 0 0.4. So now we get a circle this size when the canvas is 200, 200. If we make the canvas 400, 400, we get this. So the circle has grown with the canvas. It's still in a thirds position on the canvas. One more system variable I want to share is something called mouse X, mouse Y. Let's make a black background and we'll get rid of our circle. And instead of a circle, let's use point. But instead of a number here, I'm going to do mouse X 
comma mouse y and this is grabbing the coordinates of our mouse so if i hit play here and i put my mouse over this oh i think it's the stroke is also zero so i need to make that different let's put that in the setup we'll say stroke 255 which is white let's hit play and now ah we're doing the background you can see the little dot in there maybe uh but i need to take this background and put this in setup because what i want to do right now is i want to leave a trail uh, and let's make the point a little bit bigger so you'll be able to see it more clearly we'll do stroke weight five and we'll hit play and there we go now it's following the mouse and we could also do something with lines uh, instead that's a little more complicated so that's going to do it for today's video in the next video we're going to be talking about for loops and while loops and that's when things are going to get crazy uh, so you really want to check that video out next if you like this video give it a like subscribe uh, comment and thanks for watching see you in the next one bye